Thank you, Michael. Good morning. I'm going to jump right into it, given the fact that we have all of 11 minutes, and I'm going to kind of gallop through some stuff here, so I apologize in advance. Glad to hear there's an opportunity for a breakout session if anybody would like to go into any more detail in our programs. <clears throat> so, uh, being a public company, we need to uh, show you this uh, forward-looking statement and the safe harbor provisions therein. Um, today, I'm going to focus on our uh, human neural stem cell translation program. It's a proprietary uh, human neural stem cell. I'll talk about cell characteristics, manufacturing, and then a quick gallop through our clinical programs and give you an update where we are, and then finish up with uh, some very preliminary comments on preclinical programs that are in the hopper. The cell that we're developing is uh, HUCNSSC. It's a proprietary, highly purified cell population of neural stem cells. It's a non-modified adult stem cell. Uh, it's highly expandable to commercial scale. Um, it's a lineage-restricted cell, um, and it is non-tumorigenic. In vivo, um, the preclinical observations include the fact that the cells engraft robustly, they migrate, and they involved in site-specific differentiation into neurons, astrocytes, and oligodendrocytes. Um, we've observed the ability of these cells to uh, be neuroprotective and also were able to generate brand new human neurons in the mouse models. Um, and there is a tremendous uh, potential for application to a broad spectrum of CNS disorders. As I said, these are expandable cells and bankable, so this is a business model that is product-focused, stem cells in a bottle, literally. Um, from uh, one single uh, source of tissue, we create a master cell bank, uh, which in turn can give rise to multiple working cell banks and multiple patient doses. The cells are processed to exacting CGTP and CGMP standards. And we've already uh, banked away the cells that will be used in our clinical programs for the foreseeable future. And as I mentioned earlier, the process is very scalable for commercial use. I'm going to talk today about three clinical programs, uh, one in uh, NCL or Batten disease. It's a lysosomal storage disorder. It's fatal. Uh, we initiated a phase one study at Dornbacher's Children's Hospital at OHSU in March of 2006 which was completed in January of 2009. We came out of that study with a favorable safety profile with significant dose escalation, and then went on to initiate a phase 1B study in October of 2010. And regrettably, we, made the, we had to make the decision to suspend the conduct of that trial. Essentially, we were un, unable to identify um, suitable patients for enrollment into the study. The second program is Politius Merzbacher's disease, or PMD. Um, there's a trial underway at uh, UCSF, Benioff's Children's Hospital. It's a fatal congenital, congenital myelination disorder. And we initiated a phase one in October of 2009. Enrollment is completed in February of 2011, and we will report out data early next year. Um, and the third one is in chronic spinal cord injury, which is a phase one, two clinical trial underway at uh, Balgrist Hospital at the University of Zurich. Um, we initiated this study in March of 2011. Uh, the focus is on thoracic level injury, three to 12 months post-injury, post so this is not in the acute phase. I suppose you could say it's subacute or even chronic. And we're enrolling patients who have both complete and incomplete injuries. So uh, notwithstanding the fact that we decided to shelve the, the NCL trial, we did learn a lot from that study. We demonstrated that the feasibility of direct transplantation of large-scale doses up to a billion cells into the human brain, that it's feasible and well-tolerated. The cells engraft, and they mi migrate deep into the brain structure, which was uh, counterintuitive in some respects. There are no evidence of tumor formation. 12 months of immunosuppression was very well-tolerated and we observed long-term survival of cells at least two years out. And very importantly, and of relevance for the entire allogeneic transplant field, that the cells were capable of enduring post-withdrawal of immunosuppression regimen, and we have data on that for over uh, almost uh, two years. On myelination disorders, um, as you all know, axons require myelin to transmit nerve impulses. 
Our cells have been shown to make new oligodendrocytes and to form donor-derived myelin around host nerve axons. The kind of myelination disorders that would be of interest to us with this technology would include spinal cord injury, MS, cerebral palsy, and, of course, PMD. Um, Pelitzius Merzbacher's disease is a genetic defect. Um, children are born without the ability to myelinate their axons. It leads to loss of neurological function and is fatal and there's no treatment. We conducted a four-patient phase one trial. Um, we've enrolled all of the patients. The last patient was transplanted in February. We follow them for 12 months. And our goal here, obviously, is safety, that we're not doing anything to harm these, uh, these patients. But we're looking for evidence of donor-derived myelin by uh, magnetic resonance imaging. The proof of principle uh, here is eventually to, to be able to demonstrate that we can get de novo myelin in, in this patient population. That, in turn, would have considerable implications for other myelination disorders. On spinal cord injury, um, we've shown that our cells restore motor function long-term in mice with uh, subacute and chronic spinal cord injury in these data are in PNAS and PLOS1. This is all work done at UC Irvine by Aileen Anderson and Brian Cummings. And so essentially what we have is a broad window for therapeutic intervention. Um, we've, we've observed the cells differentiating into both neurons and to myelin-producing oligodendrocytes in the spinal cord injury mouse models. We in turn took that um, and looked at the spinal cord injury market and made the determination that this was a reasonable uh, join the dot scenario, if you will, given the fact that there, uh, there are over a million people in the U.S. Um, with spinal cord injury. Young adults, mostly male, mostly automotive in, in injuries. There are really no therapeutic options. Um, and um, they suffer with post-traumatic demyelination and neuronal loss. Um, and the other thing was we noticed that clinical trials predominantly focused on acute injury, and that's that's quite a difficult task in and of itself. So we went to Switzerland and we got Swiss Medic approval to conduct this phase one, two trial, which we initiated in March of this year. First patient was dosed in September 21. We're looking to recruit 12 patients in total with varying degrees of injury from T2 to T11. Again, safety is a major consideration and we're also looking for preliminary efficacy. We're looking at sensation, motor function, bowel and bladder function. And the good news is we're able to do this because while we're starting off in the Asia A population, we'll quickly be able to move on to the Bs and Cs where I think it would be um, more likely that we'll be able to pick up uh, any uh, evidence of clinical activity. Um, we're putting in approximately 20 million cells into the spinal cord, into the brain, and the Batten skids was up to 1 billion cells. And in this case, we've shortened the immune suppression regimen from 12 to 9 months. Our next targets include retinal disorders. Um, we'll be filing an IND for dry age-related macular degeneration in a couple of weeks. Um, and recently, we were awarded a CIRM disease team planning grant to advance a, a program in Alzheimer's. And we're seeking a full disease team grant um, for all of the IND-enabling activities the goal of which would be to initiate a clinical trial within four years. Retinal disorders are linked to degeneration of photoreceptor cells. Progressive loss of photoreceptors in the macula leads to central vision loss, i.e. age-related macular degeneration. It's the leading cause of visual impairment in the elderly. There's no medical or surgical treatment for this condition. And as I mentioned, we will be filing um, in a couple of weeks um, for an IND. Our, our cells are essentially in, in the RCS rat model um, is able to uh, maintain visual acuity, whereas the untreated animals um, will follow the, the course and eventually will go blind. Alzheimer's um, data suggests that neural stem cells may have utility in this disease. We, we know that the cells survive in a plaque-riddled Alzheimer's disease mouse brain. Um, there's evidence of improved cognitive function in the Alzheimer's disease mouse uh, following mouse neural stem cell transplants. And this work is done by um, Laferla, Frank Laferla, um, another local. And PNAS, August 09, this data was published. And I mentioned we have a disease planning grant awarded, and we're going for the full disease team grant application in January to fund 
the IND enabling activities. So for 2012, um, we're looking to have the interim analysis of the Asia A court, cohort and spinal cord injury, enroll the Bs, report out the results of the phase one uh, PMD study, initiate a multicenter trial in AMD, and initiate IND enabling studies for a phase one, two Alzheimer's disease trial. Sorry for the, the rapid the delivery. Um, thank you all for your attention and thank the organizers. I'd be happy to meet with anybody after the presentation should you like to learn more. Thank you very much.